When everyone says the best way to get business is through word of mouth, 100% true. Business of Architecture, episode 309. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. This is the show where we discuss tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and impactful architecture practice. Today's guest, after graduating from the Columbia School of Architecture's graduate program and working at several high-end and influential architecture firms, discovered that his heart wasn't fully in what he was doing in work. And so he decided to launch an illustration company that really has had quite a remarkable story. His name's Rajiv Fernandez, and he's launched a brand called Lil Icon. That's L-I-L-I-C-O-N, Lil Icon, where he does illustrations. And I'm just going to let Rajiv tell us more about it. So with that, here is today's show. Hello, Rajiv, and welcome to Business of Architecture. Hi, how you doing? It's uh, great to join you today. Tell me exactly, how would you describe what you do for our audience? So I'm kind of a jack of all trades. Um, I am trained and licensed as an architect here in New York, um, but I also have an illustration company, and that is my true creative outlet. Um, and it allows me to kind of be an active citizen and draw attention to the issues um, that are most important to me. And what issues are those? Um, right now, it's uh, all about immigration and um, kind of anything that is affecting minority rights. <laughs> so whether it be from LGBTQ issues to uh, you know just people with disabilities or uh, civil rights. Um, I, I try to create images that will get people talking and, um, you know, I'm trying to kind of bring that, uh, connect it to my architectural experience and, um, you know, bring it to the forefront with, uh, at the building scale. So, um, kind of a little bit of everything at this moment. What's the basis? Where does this passion, this fire for this particular issue come from for you personally? Um, so I would actually say it all kind of started after the 2016 election. Um, I was working for a boutique developer doing high-end real estate uh, design um, as an architect. And, you, you know, I was very content at that time designing these like four or five million dollar uh, condos in the city. And um, all of a sudden, I just realized like, wow, like we're we're kind of like in this new territory um, politically. And I feel like I need to be like a little bit more active. And um, I got to the point where I was coming to my job and not really caring about what I was doing. And I just kind of became very complacent. And then, you know, at, uh, you know, 6 p.m., I'd go home and then I'd start drawing some pictures. Um, that was kind of my way to be, you know, an active citizen. I didn't feel comfortable calling people, you know, going door to door to like raise awareness about issues, but I did feel comfortable about drawing pictures, you know, all, all day at work. I drew, I drew, uh, lines on paper to, you know, construct a building. So now I'm going home and drawing images to construct dialogue. Um, and I kind of realized that if, if I want to be really content with myself, that I need to kind of do this more during the day rather than just a few hours at night. So it, it really kind of came out um, as a passion project and uh, became uh, my company, Will Icon. And how did you finally make the decision to leave the comfort of full-time employment and do your own thing? Tell me about that. Um, well, so the company I was working for, they, um, they had to let me go for whatever various reasons. Um, it, it, was, it wasn't performance, so I was doing great there. Uh, but you know, the, their financial situation changed, but it kind of, you know, it kind of threw me in this position and I had no choice to pick up with another firm and, um, you know, get a great income coming in or really, you know, rip the bandaid off and take that risk and jump into something that was unfamiliar territory for me. Um, and I chose the latter. Uh, I, I said, you know what? I've been given this opportunity to create something of my own um, and like, let's try it out. You know, I, I kind of look and see all these successful people in the past and, 
you know, they had to kind of overcome some hardship. Like they learned a lot about themselves. And so I kind of looked at it like that. I was like, okay, I'm going to be in unfamiliar territory. It's going to be challenging. I'm going to learn a lot about myself. And that's exactly what happened. You know, I kind of left the security of, um, you know, having a stable income. Um, it allowed me to become really uh, resourceful with what I had and allowed me to really start hustling. Um, so that's I, like the next uh, year and a half just became a r real hustle. But I was able to kind of figure out a niche uh, that worked for me. And, um, and I continue doing that to this day. So with uh, the illustration side, kind of focusing on like politics and social issues. But then um, I still freelance as an architect. So, you know, having the ability to choose which projects I work on, that'll allow me to kind of throw my creative effort into the illustration business. And when you say hustling, what exactly were you doing? Uh, you know, it was it was just going up to people and saying like, hey, um, are you looking for uh, an illustrator to do work or are you looking for an architect to do work? Um, you know, being licensed in the city of New York is um, really valuable. Uh, you know, I'm familiar with how the Department of Buildings work and, you know, it allows me to work with um, smaller clients who, who, who need that, you know, authentication that I'm able to provide and, um, and I have the expertise for. So, you know, I'm able to take on um, smaller projects, um, which are you know, really straightforward and, you know, provide, provide my services as they needed. But, you know, living in a, uh, a co-op building in New York, you know, I have a lot of neighbors who are doing renovations and they, many of them don't quite understand kind of all the necessary steps you have to go through. So, you know, having already done that on my own, I was able to, uh, you know, present myself as, you know, an architect for hire, a freelance architect, um, as opposed to one who works for a larger firm. And did you find it was easier to get architectural work or illustrator work? Uh, architectural work, actually. And, and it's really, you know, what's amazing is when everyone says the best way to get business is through word of mouth, 100% true. Um, projects just fell into my lap. And a lot of it was from uh, colleagues of mine who had gone to school with them, um, you know, getting projects on their own and, and getting a lot other referrals. But then they were kind of overwhelmed and they needed to pass things off. So they pass them on to me. And then I've even done that myself. And, you know, the nice thing is uh, we all kind of have developed our own skills that work, that lend themselves to certain projects. So um, someone might come to me. I'm like, do you know what? This isn't right for me, but I know the exact person who would, who would do it. And the really nice thing is I have a great um, set of friends who have like started their own businesses. And we're very, uh, we share a lot of resources with each other. Um, and we really kind of help each other out. So it's kind of like we have a larger firm, but we all kind of have like our own uh, offices and they're separate from each other. How do you make sure that the ease of getting architectural work doesn't drown out the focus of what it sounds like your passion is, which is the illustration? It just requires the ability to say no many times um, and being very upfront with a, with a client at the beginning. Um, so, you know, I, I tell many of my clients that, I only take on X amount of projects at a time. So I might only take on like two or three architecture projects at a time. That way I can give them the attention that they deserve, but also allow me to, um, you know, do my creative illustration. So many times when I come to the office, it's the first half of the day. Um, it's all just uh, doing architectural work. And then the second half of the day, like from 2 p.m. onwards, um, I focus on uh, the illustration. And um, one way I'm able, able to do that is, you know, having a dedicated office space. I, I worked out of my um, apartment for the first year and a half after, you know, I went out on my own. And it was really difficult to kind of separate my personal life and my business life. You know, like when I, when I see my bed there, I would go and like lay down for an hour and play a crossword puzzle and then realized that I was doing work at like 2 a.m. in the morning. So once I got a dedicated office space, it became like a very rigid schedule. Um, 
And then when I come home, I completely detach from work life and I have my own personal space again. Sorry, let me ask you this. What was your first big break in terms of the illustration work? I had done uh, an image um, that I call Immigrant, Immigrant Lady Liberty, and it features the Statue of Liberty wearing a hijab. And it was included in this book for, um, called Posters for Change by Princeton Architectural Press. And when they were doing press for that, um, the Washington Post did a full page spread of my image. So, uh, you know, that, that was kind of the realization where I saw, hey, these images have impact and they can create a larger discussion, um, whether it be about, you know, immigration, Islam, women's rights. Um, it, you know, it, it's kind of a faster turnaround time than, say, the traditional architecture route where it takes like a year for a building to come out and then we can talk about uh you know what the building signifies where it's located how it's affecting the community whereas an image that can be produced in as little as like an hour is the illustration work is it profitable for you now um it is a i wouldn't say profitable like i could solely rely on it um but it you know i'm jumping into a completely new industry um that i didn't know before so you know, at first I thought that, oh, this is going to be great. I, like it started out because I had a, uh, a, a children's book deal. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm going to make a ton of money off of this. And then, you know, when the book didn't do as great as I was hope, hoped it would, I was like, okay, this is a lot more, more difficult. Um, so it's kind of a slow grind, but I think I'm learning more and more each day about what is required. And the other thing is I just see that there's so much talent out there. So it, it really forces me to kind of, um, you know, figure out a way to separate myself from, you know, all the others. Uh, and, you know, I, I think, I think that works with architecture too. It's like, if you figure out a niche that works for you, you need to kind of market yourself as, you know, the person who's good at that. So, um, yeah, like, so, so right now I've, you know, like I said before, I start off with, uh, children's books and I was, my idea was like, oh, I'm going to make a, a children's brand um, and use design, you know, to kind of approach the, the modern appreciator of art. And um, I realized that I wasn't really passionate about uh, children. I don't have any children. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't have like daily inspiration. Um, and then I realized, you know, it was this idea of illustrating perspectives. So the children's books were a perspective between an adult and a child. And then now it's kind of become more of a left versus right uh, perspective. Yeah, so that, that's, kind of, that's kind of like how, you know, I figured out what my niche was. And what, what was your first paying commission after the Statue of Liberty graphic and got that publicity? Um, I would, oh gosh, I can't really put uh, dates to it. But I did a, a banner on the side of a building in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, it was the uh, Immigrant Legal Center, and it was a banner that, you know, illustrated like the faces of the served population for that building. Um, that was actually through a competition that I won, and as well as I did a uh, interior piece of art, um, that was another competition that was won. Um, I've also uh, worked with a client um, here in New York, Harlem School of the Arts doing their interior graphics package. So wayfinding signage, um, you know, in architecture, that's something I'd worked with before. So that was like a great project where I could kind of combine um, my two skill sets together. Rajiv, and where do you see your business going from here forward? I, my ideal goal is to um, do illustrations in the editorial world. Like my, my, my ultimate dream is to get the New Yorker cover. Um, that, that would be one of my, uh, that's one of my top goals. Um, you know, and the thing is every time I kind of, you know, do more and more with illustration, you know, I'll start to miss architecture a little bit. So um, eventually I, I'd like to, you know, do more graphic work at the building scale, you know, whether that be incorporating, um, large scale graphics into buildings. Um, you know, I think that could even lend itself to, you know, designing, um, you know, 
like like uh, walls in buildings, but using like architectural um, elements to kind of create that. So m m almost like um, installation art, but you know, overall creating a graphic that kind of has um, a meaning that's interpreted by the user. And from a from a business standpoint, where do you see the business going in the future in terms of being able to grow up? What are your plans for Little Icon, which is your illustration company? I I am running it kind of as an artist um, that's that's for commission. Um, and the, the thing is, like my style isn't it, it it's my own, but it's something that uh, you know I could I could direct and have you know a staff work with me to. Um, you know, help create those uh, images. Um, you know, a, a lot of it is a, a lot of what when I come up with designs, a lot of it is just kind of brainstorming ideas and using you know wit and humor to kind of um, figure out a way to you know communicate a message. So um, you, you know, once I kind of figure out you know the the concept of something, the the drawing just kind of comes naturally. So you know, and I think that's some that that's kind of a lot how you know a lot of um, firms work. I, I I kind of run, I run a lot of my projects as if I would an architecture project. You know, we start with concept design, and then we do some design development, and then you know once that once that is approved by the client, we kind of figure out um, what we need to produce for either sale or you know for construction. Um, so that's my construction document phase, and then comes the marketing phase, which is like construction administration, you know, um, getting the product out there and then advertising it so people can uh, buy into it. And from this journey that you've gone on so far, this entrepreneurial journey, what, what are the lessons that you think uh, would be interesting for our audience here? I have always um, said the ability to edit is one that is, um, you know, paramount. Um, I, I guess both these industries, actually many industries, yeah, and the, most creative industries are about, I, I know it's going to sound cliche, but they're like all about storytelling. Um, you know, once you kind of convey, you need to figure out the best, you need to understand who your audience is and the best way to convey a message to them. Um, so with, with illustration, like it's just using the most simple creating a simple image that's going to stick in someone's mind. Um, with architecture, it's, you know, it's creating that um, feeling when you first walk into a space and, you know, understanding, understanding a, it, it, it's, it's eliciting emotion from your physical space. And then the illustrations eliciting the emotion from a visual image. Actually, it, actually, in addition to um, the architecture and the illustration, I've also started uh, teaching. And um, I've, been, I've uh, been working at the School of Visual Arts and um, City Tech College in, in Brooklyn. Um, so, you know, that, that's one thing I teach my students as well is, you know, the ability to edit their drawings and, and only show what they're trying to convey. You know, everything that they present needs to show new information. Um, you know, you, you rarely read a story where they kind of repeat what they just said, like, two pages ago, you always want to find out something new to kind of move forward. Um, and, and, and basically like those are kind of, those are the tools that I apply to um, each of each of the businesses. And what's your big vision where you'd like to take this? Uh, as I said before, I really like to be in the editorial world and helping, you know, authors tell their stories with, with a visual. Um, what it is for five years from now is um, you know, I'd like to have a few people working with me and we kind of, you know, story tell together, um, whether that be like more of a creative agency, um, you know, I, I think that's still up in, up in the air, but, but, um, as for like my top goals right now, it's really to kind of get in with certain editorial fields to, um, you know, illustrate, illustrate stories that they have. Well, Rajiv Fernandez, thank you for joining us here on the Business of Architecture podcast. Thank you. It was uh, great to talk to you. And that is a wrap. 
As a podcast listener, I'd like to invite you to two free online educational seminars for firm owners. The first teaches you how to structure your firm to avoid the overwhelming fires that plague so many firm owners. If you're ready to move from overwhelmed operator to excited owner, visit businessofarchitecture.com forward slash freedom webinar to access this free online training. The second seminar you can access shows you how to attract your ideal clients to your firm consistently day in and day out. Go to architectwebinar.com to access this training. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.